Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome back. I did have some other ideas for videos for you guys. However, I actually caught COVID a couple of weeks ago. Now you probably know this if you follow me on Twitter or whatever, or if you've seen my Instagram stories, but basically I've been a little bit unwell and I haven't been able to do maybe the things I wanted to do. Rest assured they are coming. I did notice a few requests for different videos while I've been away. One of them was for a investment plants video where the price bracket is a lot lower. So say one to 200 pounds, dollars, whatever, um, as opposed to thousands of pounds, which I completely appreciate. So you will get that. You will get a bunch of other stuff that you guys have been requesting. I just need a little bit of time because the time that I had to do this, I was literally on the sofa with COVID, but I'm fine now. I'm good to go. It was not as bad as I thought it would be. It was okay. I am double vaccinated, by the way, but you can still get COVID. You can still be symptomatic and it can still cause you harm. So please, if you do have any symptoms, please take it seriously. Isolate, do whatever you've got to do. So what are we doing in today's video? Well, we're going to keep it pretty simple. I have this plant here. Now this is a state. I think I've shown you a video of this plant probably top down before in a video. I can't remember which video it was. It's a recent video anyway. This I believe, and I can't pronounce this, is Philodendron, is it was, was Gwixii? I believe that's what it is. The name will be up on the screen, but I have this philodendron. I'm very lucky to have this actually, but it is in a bit of a state. Now I'm pretty sure these two plants here in the bottom, sorry, I can't really bring it up to you. You're about two meters away. These two plants in the bottom of the pot are children of this plant. So what I'm gonna do is this is in soil. It's clearly had some neglect in its time, as you can tell. It's in soil. I'm going to take it out of soil and I'm going to transition it to basically pond that I have here. I have a self-watering pot under here, which is this one. It's a little bit grubby, but it don't matter. And I'm going to actually stick it on a pole today. I will show you when we get this out. I can see that the base of the plant is very thin and it's become thick very quickly. Also, it has a lot of aerials, so I'm pretty sure that when this is repotted, it's not going to be very stable. It's already got a little stake in, keeping it sort of upright anyway. It's not going to be stable, so I am actually going to put it on this pole. I think that's the best thing for it. These things, by the way, when they grow large, they are absolutely unbelievable. So I really want to give this thing the best chance. So that's what I'm going to do. Don't really have too many pots, hence I've had to use this size pot, but I think this size pot is going to be okay. It's not going to last forever, don't get me wrong, but it should be enough to make the transition from soil to pond. And if anything goes wrong, hopefully we can settle it and then we'll repot it larger at a later date because it'll probably need a bigger pole at some point. But that's what I'm going to do. I will separate out the babies. Sorry, I have hair stuck to my face. I will separate out the babies somewhere or another and I will grow them out. I will tag them so I know what they are. And hopefully we will have some more lovely plants. I hear a few of you telling me that this plant is not the easiest to deal with, which I was actually surprised to hear. Doesn't like being shipped, I think you said. I can't remember exactly what you said. It was a few weeks ago. But I've basically been warned that this plant isn't the easiest in the world. So we'll see how it goes. And as of course, I will update you in future videos. I'll just pick it up and I'll show you how it's doing. So that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is trying to get this out. Do I have anything to keep the soil in? No. Let me get something really quickly. Right. We're going to do it just like this. So I will get to your questions in a minute, but I just thought I'd basically explain to you what has happened. Um, essentially, I had COVID, which was very unexpected because I tested positive for COVID the day before I was supposed to fly to Venice for a week. So needless to say, I did not go to Venice for a week. I was here and I was dying on the sofa. So that was fun. Um, but other than that, other than that, I've had a good time. I've been rested. I did manage to get away abroad. I actually went to Egypt for two weeks. So that's where I've been. I don't look tanned, which is honestly what I expected. Maybe I'm a little bit tanned. No, literally. No, just no. Um, I actually went on holiday and I, I tread the whole thing as just like very low key chilled out holiday. I didn't take any makeup with me, which I swear to God, I've never done that before. Normally when I go on holiday, I'll at least take like a little bit of makeup. I didn't take anything. And I've never felt so liberated in my entire life. All I did was I had nice blonde, clean flowing hair, lovely, lovely skincare and no makeup. And it was the best thing ever. And I'm so happy and I'm missing it already. But I basically treat the whole holiday as like a very low key chill out holiday. 
um, which did me a lot of good, to be honest. I sat under the shade most of the time, hence I'm not very tanned. Although, admittedly, I, I have also lost some tan since I've come back. So this doesn't really want to come out. And I just read some books, really. Um, I've been meaning to read since I've come back, but I kind of got set back a little bit with COVID. Why won't this come out? Oh my goodness. I don't want to have to cut this out, but I will if I have to. Two minutes, this is stopping me concentrating. Oh, it's because there's roots. It's because there's roots stuck, isn't there? Oh yeah, right. Well, we're out of that and we haven't really lost anything, so that's good. Can you see what I meant about the size of the plant? Hopefully you can see that there. You can see that it's, I mean, these are the two babies that are connected to the plant. And then back here, it's small and then it gets larger. It's not ideal. I'm going to gently take the soil off this. And then at some point I'm going to go off camera. I've already got a bucket of water. I'm just going to rinse it around in the water and, and sort it that way. And then we will separate these babies. Well, they are separate, which is actually quite good. We will just have to very gently go through this and loosen it off. And it's surprisingly quite loose. So yes, on holiday, I basically just sat under a parasol for two weeks, reading, chilling, all rest. I actually, the sun would kind of not go in at 3 p.m. in Egypt, but it would get a lot cooler. So I was basically going back to my room at 3 p.m. watching the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. So I was watching that the whole time. So that was my holiday, really. Um, I managed to get to the gym on holiday. That was really nice. I have not been really since I got back, which is a big shame because... I feel a bit weird having not gone, but I'm going to the gym today for the first time since I got back off holiday, which was like nearly two weeks ago now. So I'm keen to get back on that wagon because COVID's had me not necessarily able to keep track of my health. So I'm going to be back doing that. Oh, this is going to happen way quicker than I expected today. I'm surprised. Right. This is one of the little babies. Let's put him there. The second little baby is still attached. Oh, cute. There we go. That's the second baby. There we go. Right. Yeah, I did have a good time. I did manage to get away. Um, but I feel in a way all that rest was kind of obliterated when I got home and then I got COVID. I suspect I caught it on the flight or caught it at the airport or something like that. I, I could have also caught it on holiday. Who knows at this point? But that was basically it for me. This is not a lot of root. You know how before I was complaining that well, I wasn't complaining, but I was telling you that this pot here might have been a bit too small. It's definitely not too small, looking at these roots. Like, really not. I'm surprised this plant's been in this pot for a long, long time. And I'm kind of surprised that it's uh, it's like this. This is, this is not a lot at all. We do have some old rot, I think, that's dried out. And I can see this because, and I'm, I appreciate you can't see this, guys. I'm really sorry. Um, but there's a lot of roots that have turned into like hairs almost, which tells me that the sheath has rotted off. So that's not ideal at all. I'm actually very surprised by the state of this. And I think this is a good thing that we are transitioning this today and hopefully we can get it looking better because this is not ideal. Now it looks quite healthy up top. I know it's, um, it's still very juvenile, but it, it looks all right, doesn't it? That looks quite nice just very surprised like you would not expect that that plant over years as well would have this root it's obviously rotted off um, the other ones are better actually the babies have done better so that's really interesting but hopefully the babies are back up so if I lose this plant I still have this plant because this plant did feature in a video that I did I don't actually know maybe a month ago now um, where I talked about plants that were sort of rare, but not ones that people have in their collections. So just something really unusual that you don't really see that isn't sought after, which means that, you know, you might get it for a decent price. So it featured in that video and it is definitely, definitely a favorite of mine. I do recommend them so far. We'll see what happens so far. It's hard to say, isn't it? Because I would argue that if this is the state of the roots for this plant, then this plant is probably quite tough right? Because it doesn't have a lot to survive on and yet it's doing all right. Now, obviously it should be way bigger than this given the thickness of this, but it's not doing that terribly. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it's tough? Do you think it's not tough? If you have experience with this, then please let me know. Let me know what to expect. To me, it doesn't look so bad. As I say, the space between the nodes is absolutely tiny. Sorry, I appreciate you can't see. Um, that's what we're dealing with. I don't know. Let me know if it's easy or not. So anyway, yeah, that's that's the situation, basically. I did manage to get on holiday, but I was supposed to be going to a wedding in Venice, and I was supposed to be there for a week, but literally 
the day before I was supposed to fly, I had to just say, no, I cannot, I cannot go. It's a big shame. Never been to Venice. Always wanted to go to Venice, actually. So the dream will live on. <laughs> you never, never know, maybe next year or something like that, because I have to get back to work, back to the grind, so that I can make money to pay all my bills this year, because as a lot of you may know, my bills are mounting. So I need a brush, because I don't want to be stood in muck. I think what I'm debating on doing is making some kind of like timetable almost of like my week and what I should maybe do on, on certain days. Like I have a day a week where it's like a rest day or a day where I go out or I do something fun. Timetable days at the shop. So I have like one day a week solid on the shop, you know, one day a week on content planning and just do that because at the minute it's a bit scattered, especially with having to drop things every so often and go to the gym and stuff like that. Because if you guys missed it, I have a personal trainer, so she normally does her sort of schedule, her rota at the beginning of the week. Well, Sunday, the week before, and just basically says, what's your availability? And she tries to just squish me in. It's very flexible, um, which is kind of great. But ironically, it is quite ironic because when I quit my job, I thought this is great. Everything's so flexible, but I'm almost in a trap now where things are so flexible. Everything feels really up in the air and no two weeks are the same. And the, I never quite know where I'm at. And I'm not a person that actually deals with that very well. Like I like routines. I like regimen. I like things to be precise. I like order. So it, it doesn't really feel good for me. And it actually wears me out a little bit. So I want to try and think about what I do in a week and how I can use that to my advantage and, and pencil in some, some me time and stuff like that. I think that would be really, really useful, really therapeutic. And I think I'll just be overall more productive, really, because I need, I, I need to figure these things out. Things have gone a little bit, as we say in Britain, tits up since, I don't know, since the start of this year, really. Um, I need to figure that out anyway, because obviously I need to figure out what's going to happen with the horse situation when that comes to a close, which... By the way, there's no update right now. Um, I will give you one when there is one. It's, I know a lot of people ask me about it. There kind of isn't one at the minute. So you'll get one when there is one, of course. I expect there will be an update in maybe about a month's time. Maybe less. We'll see. Anyway, we shall see. We shall see. All right, should we go on to some questions? Because I, I, I wrote some down. I don't have a ton, but this isn't a long video, as you might be able to tell today. It's just a bit more of a chilled, relaxing video. And I deliberately picked a plant that was not difficult. Because the last time, if you remember, when I did this guy, can you see him? Yeah, you can, here. You put him down. Yes, you can sort of see him here. This absolutely gorgeous beast who needs a bit of a clean. He hasn't moved from his spot because he was so heavy. So he lives here at the minute. I don't know, maybe I need to put him on wheels. So I'm making sure I don't do anything silly. Oh, have I just pulled the root off? Oh, goody. Bollocks. I need to stop touching that. They should also not be that brittle though. Oh, I was supposed to mention this at the start to give you a PSA and I completely forgot. So I'm having a launch on this Saturday. So that's actually tomorrow from this upload. That is the 11th of June. I'm having a launch in the shop. The link to my shop is in the description. If there is anything there you would like, I would take the opportunity to look now and then you know what you want to do on launch day. So that was just a very quick PSA before I get into the questions. Oh my gosh. Someone asked me what my favorite budget plan was. And I still, and I wrote this down for this video and I still don't have an answer. So I'm actually going to think about that more and I'm going to answer that in a future video because there's a lot of budget plants I actually like, but right now I can't, I can't think of like the budget plant. I would say to you that I like a lot of, a lot of Calathea and I think, I mean, I really love Philodendron Micans. Maybe that one would be a good budget plant. I don't know. I need to think about that a little bit more. So I'm going to get back to you on that one. Yeah. Okay. Someone asked me what Aroid grows the fastest in my shop. And honestly, I think it's going to be a toss up between Monstera Adansonii, the variegated one. I mean, the normal Adansonii grows fast as well, but I have the variegated here. That and probably Philodendron Glorious. If you don't know what that plant is, that is a hybrid of Philodendron Gloriosum and Philodendron Melanochrysum. But I do find that a lot of crawlers grow quickly here and generally anything with Gloriosum in it, you probably can't tell. Can you see any of it? So down here, there is a ton of Gloriosum. This is all Gloriosum down here, actually. Then I have another shelf up here that is Gloriosum. Yeah, you can see that. And then I have Gloriosum here. And then I have... Do I have any more? I have some up there. Oh, good Lord. I've got a lot, right? So <laughs> what, what you can take from that is it grows really well. 
it doesn't seem to grow well for everybody on planet Earth. I sometimes hear people say, I don't know why you're saying it's easy. It's not. I do find generally people would say it's easy, but I think this is generally, um, you know, it's definitely one of the faster growing um, propagations. I propagated this probably very recently. That's borderline sellable already. Look, there's a nice new leaf there. And then you've got the baby that it originally had on the back. I'll probably get another leaf off it, maybe then sell that. So yeah, it grows pretty quickly. But I find Glorious, which I don't have in this aisle and I'm kind of penned in, I find that to be a little bit quicker. Um, I, I don't know why that is, because that's actually a climber, Glorious. You probably can't see it, but it's actually here. Maybe you can if I wiggle it. There is a, a big Glorious plant here that's actually from my flat. So that grows really quickly as well. The Adansonia has a couple of aisles down, but generally that's the quickest. I would say Anthurium are very slow. Most types of Anthurium, with the exception of, I don't know if you can see this guy. Can you see him? This boy here, oh my God, why isn't he just hanging out? That's awesome. This guy here, uh, Mysterious Dark Boy, he grows very quickly. He's a lovely one to have. Uh, what else? Can't think of any right now. I'm kind of looking at lots of different plants. These aren't too bad. Um, the Florida Beauty, this is all Florida Beauty here, by the way. Um, they're all right. They're not too bad. I wouldn't say they were super slow. They're not super quick. Depends. I'm finding that they're all right, but their root systems are pretty good now. So I guess they've got quicker for that reason. Yeah, most, most Anthurium aren't very quick. Like, what's this boy here? He's lovely. My goodness, we're going to have to have a little look at him just because he's nice. He'd probably look great on camera. What is he? He is Anthurium Bessiei. Probably Bessiei Af. I don't think he's actually Bessiei, but he's really nice. Look. Very slow though. Very, very slow. Really depends. But any velvety anthurium, in my personal opinion, you can count on being slow. The glossy anthurium, I would say, are the faster ones. Monstera, not all Monstera are created equal. Gotta tell you that. Mainly because Burley Mark's Flame, which is not here, it's in the next aisle, that's really slow. Obviously, Deliciosa is reasonably quick. It just varies, really. There's not one quick thing and one non-quick thing. It really kind of depends. But generally, I would say crawling philodendron are the quickest. Right, I'm going to very quickly go and basically swizzle this lot in water to get the crap off the roots. So I'll be one second, because there wasn't much point in doing it back here, because you're not going to be able to see anything. Right. Couldn't get it all off. Don't know if you can see what this looks like without dripping anything on my monitor. Uh, if I hold it up in front of something white, it's it's not all off, really. But honestly, I'm going to say something that's really unpopular opinion. I don't think it matters that much. Look, I know that when you convert things, or you may not know, right? But generally, the rule is when you convert something from, say, soil to pond or liquor or whatever, you need to get everything off the root. And yeah... Right. I do that where I can, but if, if it's not going to come off, I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to try and scrub it to get it off, right? In my experience, not a lot has happened if you leave a bit on. What I sometimes find is some roots will go rot or do whatever upon transition anyway. It really depends. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Honestly, it depends on the plant, depends on the state of the roots. It depends on all kinds of shit. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm willing to take the risk. I know these will be fine. I think the big guy will be fine, to be honest. I think we might just lose a bit of root, but I'm not overly concerned about it. To be honest, these roots are so brittle that, see, one of them just, I mean, it's arguably snapped, but one of them just came straight off anyway. So I don't personally think I could get it all off if I wanted to. So I'm going to leave that like that. You might be able to see that at the front. Yeah, you sort of can, you sort of can. I'm going to leave it and be it on my head. I guess. That's the state he's in. Not bad. Again, I'm going to keep these aerials in with the final build, we'll call it. And uh, there we go. Let's pull that off. Someone asked me if I'm playing any video games. Um, unfortunately, I'm not at the moment. And that has nothing to do with being unwell or anything. I basically packed everything away when I moved out of my house. As you guys may know, I'm, I'm actually in with my parents at the minute. I'm kind of in between places because I'm saving for a house. I'm, I'm attempting to get a house right now. So I'm doing that. So basically all my shit is packed away. So I'm not doing a whole lot. I'm not doing a whole lot. I've been watching stuff. I mean, to be honest, the trial, the Johnny Depp trial has, has kept me going for God knows how long now. So I haven't had to think about what I'm up to. 
But I've also been doing a lot of work. Um, be prior to the holiday, I had to do weeks worth of work so that I had the videos ready to go so that I still had content out while I was going. So I haven't had a ton of free time. And when I have, I've been working out or I've, I've filled that hobby with, you know, I've filled that time slot with, with different things. So I haven't actually been playing video games. I would like to, but I tell you what, I haven't even been following what's coming out. The only thing I've been following what's coming out is actually horror games. Um, and there's some really good shit coming out. I'm like quite impressed actually with some of the stuff. There's a really cool multiplayer that's coming out. I can't remember the name of that. But it, it's kind of like, uh, what's it called? If you know the name of it, let me know in the comments. It's kind of like, they almost look like Duracell bunnies. Um, it's like a horror multiplayer. That looks really good. I'm waiting for the new Outlast. Obviously, huge Outlast fan here, by the way. I've got my eye on things. Oh, I think there's an Evil Dead game coming as well. There's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre game coming as well. That's from the guys that made Friday 13th, which I'm obsessed with, by the way. Great game. I've got so many hours on that, it's not even funny. So yeah, there's, there's a few things I'm looking forward to anyway, but I don't know when they come out, if it's even this year, but I will absolutely be keeping my eye on them. I actually, I'm really fortunate enough to own a PS5, and I think I bought that. It must have been around January this year. I think it was Amazon. They had a restock of it. And it was about half seven in the morning or something. And I just managed to grab one before they went. It was a restock that I don't think anyone had been informed about. And I managed to get one. And I'm so lucky to have one. And it is still in its box. And when I say it's still in its box, I mean it's still in the Amazon box. It hasn't been opened from the Amazon box, which was a bad move. I should have checked it was fine, but I haven't. Because I said to myself, and I'm really stupid like this. I do weird poetic things and I save things for things. I'm just a bit weird like that. I basically said to myself, I'm not going to open this until I get a house. I'm going to unpack it in my new house. <laughs> I've, I've put a lot on that. So I haven't actually opened it, but obviously I plan on using that at some given point. So that's what I will be doing. I've just realized I'm supposed to put a steak in here and I, I have not done that. So I'm going to try and do that now. This is probably going to look very dumb, by the way, when it's done, but it is it is genuinely for functionality at this point, so just deal with it, I suppose. Right, put that like that. Yes. Okay, yes. This is what we want. This is what we like. Okay, next question. Um, oh, Pam asked me this. Would you ever want an outdoor garden? Like, are you into it? I think, I can't remember exactly what, how you worded it, but basically, like, is it for you? Is it your kind of thing? And I think it could be, right? Now, I've never thought about it before, um, but given the fact I'm searching for a house and stuff like that, it's certainly something I'm thinking about now. And I've given it some thought on like what kind of garden it would be. I'm not going to have a lot of space. I don't know if folks in America know this. I'm not going to have a lot of space because houses in the UK, they're not as big as American houses, I don't think. I might have that wrong, but I don't think they are. The outdoor space certainly isn't as big. If you're going to have outdoor space, it's, it's going to be at a huge premium. Sorry, I'm just working out how to do this. I'm going to do what I normally do, and I'm going to tie it to the pole. Um, so I'm not going to have a ton of space, but I would certainly like to have outdoor space and do something with it. I like flowers and stuff. I'm not mad about flowers. I'm quite masculine in, in nature sometimes. It's probably why I like aroids, right? I mean like I'm masculine in my tastes. I don't know how I mean by that, actually. It's probably come out the wrong way. You know what I mean? I, I'm not a flower person, generally. I like them. I think they're great. And I think the English cottage flowery gardens look amazing. But me, it's more about the time. I do not have time to maintain a full-on garden along with a full-on house, along with whatever pets I own at the time, whether I still have my fish and my horse and, and everything else along with this place. I can't do that. So the garden I had would be something that was a little bit less um, less requiring of maintenance, you could say. So I think for me, that would mean um, maybe grasses. I'd certainly like a couple of outdoor palm trees because there are a couple that can actually live in the UK. Obviously, I have Ben to thank for knowing that because I wouldn't have known that at all. So I think Ben probably helped me find some nice palms or something for the garden. Just sorry, guys. Just stuff like that. Like it, it can't be something that is high maintenance. It just, it cannot because I'm not going to have the time, but do I want an outdoor space? Absolutely. I've basically decided that I would like a hot tub, um, which sounds insane, but they're not, they cost a little bit of money to buy. And obviously it's something that I'd have to save up for quite a long time for probably a good couple of years or something like that. But I fancy one of those in the garden. So maybe a hot tub in the corner of the garden that I can relax in. Dead simple, nothing like insane. 
and then just maybe a palm or two, some grasses, just stuff like that, just a very relaxed kind of garden, nothing nothing insane. And that's not because I don't like insane gardens, it's, it's my time. So as long as it's something that I can maintenance myself and it's just not going to be something that's going to be overwhelming, then I'm so good to go on that. So I'm trying to like thread all these roots in. <laughs> I'm trying not to break them as well, because knowing me, I, I will literally break these. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking anyway. I've definitely given it some thought, but only recently due to the whole, you know, I don't really have anywhere to live situation. So we'll see how that pans out. Oh, that's already snapped, look. God damn it. I'm just a bit clueless, really, because I've never done any of this before. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've never had a house before. I've never been able to decorate anything before. That's another thing. I was on Twitter the other day. <laughs> complaining about the fact I'd taken, I don't know how many different interior design style quizzes. And I took about maybe 15 quizzes and every single quiz came out with a different result based on like, hi, do you like this photo? What do you think of this chair? Do you know what I mean? What do you, what's your favorite drink? I'm just like, what? So I've been trying to figure out everything really. And I feel like I don't have a lot of time to figure that out. So it's all been a bit of a, a blur, but I'm certainly trying to discover all these things basically work out all the things so i have found out what my interior design style is by the way and actually if you're into interior design maybe you can guess what you think my style is i, I feel like no one's gonna get it i actually feel like no one's gonna get it obviously if you're not into interior design i'm sorry it's probably not a game that you want to play but if you are and you've decorated your home and you you care for that and you're into that please let me know in the comments what you think my interior design style is. I am so curious at this point. It, of course, a lot of people's styles are more than one, but all I want you to guess is the main one because I, I've, I've really nailed it down. The quizzes didn't help, by the way. Um, I don't even know how I managed to figure it out, but the quizzes were absolutely no help at all. Yeah, let me know in the comments what you think it is. I am so curious at this point, so curious. So he's in there and he's looking He's, he's all right, isn't he? I haven't fully fastened him, but then again, he's not, he's not so bad on his own. Is that snapped? Oh, tell me it hasn't snapped. Have I done that? I have kind of done that. Well, you know what? That's my bloody fault, isn't it? So yeah, I've been trying to figure everything out. Colors, furniture, that's a big thing. I've been trying to just figure out all of it. So I'm thinking about guns, but I'm not thinking about them as obviously as intently as I'm thinking about the house itself. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm planning a lot of stuff. Hopefully some very good news will happen soon, maybe within the next month and all will go well. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to having my own place. I think it's going to be great. So we will see. I, do, I just don't want to say anything, guys. I'm not wanting to say anything because I don't want to jinx it. I just don't want to jinx it. I, I just feel like I'm due a good turn. So I don't want to jinx it. I will, I will tell you everything as soon as things are final and things go well. So you can take from that what I'm saying, if that makes sense. I just don't want to jinx anything. I, I can't bear it. I cannot bear it. So he's kind of on this pole. Uh, he, I mean, he looks how he looks, doesn't he? He doesn't look amazing. Let's see, he's actually um, sized quite nicely for this, I would honestly say. So if I tilt him forward, that's kind of what he looks like at the minute. Again, it is quite underwhelming, but he just, he needs to grow. He needs to, he needs to sort himself out, doesn't he? Yeah, something like that. He's nice. So we need to take care of these smaller pots. And I don't think I'm going to do too much. I've got some pond here, but I don't think I've got any more. So do I just lecker them and worry about the potential rotting situation? What I'm going to have to do is, no matter what I do with these, I will have to check on them in a, a week to two weeks and any rot will have come in and then I can remove it and carry on and it will be fine. I've actually got some stuff. I'm going to dip them in and then I think we're just going to have to get a pot. I'll tell you what, I'll see if I've got any small self-watering pots that still have the pond in them and then we can use them. Okay, we're actually really good. I found pond. I'm so happy about this. So it should have enough in there. If not, I have access to a little bit more pond. These are very grubby, by the way. They've come out of the shop and they're a bit nasty and I haven't prepared them. So if we could just ignore that, that would be really good. Put a little bit of the pond in. So yeah, I will rinse this through, guys. Don't, don't judge. Don't judge. Well, you can, you can judge. We'll just get a little bit in there. Like so, and a little bit in here. 
like so to cover that. And then we will begin. So one more question I think we've got because we are nearly done. What is something, this is kind of verbatim, but kind of not. What is something that, yeah, I can't read my writing, that you thought would be awesome about being a YouTuber that isn't in hindsight? At least I think it said in hindsight, I'm not actually sure. Something I thought would be awesome that isn't. I think, I would have said the working hours and stuff, but I've already covered that. And I think that's a me problem um, in terms of, I thought that extra, flow and, and more control over what I do and when was great but at the minute it's tiring me so I'm, I'm not going to count that because I feel like that might be a me problem. What I think would be a problem for nearly anyone in my position actually is I thought it would be great to be able to share a, a lot with the internet and, and make friends and speak to new people and, and all of that right. That's definitely something that I thought would be awesome and it is that's not me saying it's not it is the the shit thing is of course how that's ended up as you may or may not know and i do like to continuously remind people of this my dms are closed essentially now you might think oh right okay my dms are actually a large part of of how i can communicate with everyone obviously I, I used to message a lot of you obviously i can't now that could also be a me thing although i would argue the more subscribers you get or the more followers you have the harder that is to then talk to people so i, I don't think that's a me thing or anything but i think me having to turn off dms might be a me thing again um, so I'm not really sure, but it's definitely something that I, if you'd asked me at the beginning, I would have said, oh, that'd be so cool. Um, but it, it just hasn't panned out that way. Um, I still get to talk to you guys, but it's, it's just not, oh, bollocks, I don't have enough of this. God damn it. It's not how I thought it would be, right? It's not quite as, it hasn't quite panned out the way I thought it would. I've mentioned before about turning DMs back on and stuff, but... If you take out any other deciding factor, you're left with, you know, well, how much time are you going to need to respond to people? Do you have it? And the reality is I kind of don't. So I'm actually looking for some pawn. I'm going to steal some pawn from this monster. I'm cheating. I know I'm cheating. Let's put that in there. So yeah, that's probably the only thing I can think of right now. I'm sure there's others. It, it's not nice having everything you do be scrutinized and if you breathe the wrong way. You get people coming for you. That That's not nice, but I've talked about that a million times. That's You could argue it's it's part of the territory, but I don't think there's anything that should give people license to be dicks. Generally, that's just how I think. I'm probably not quite alone in that, but a lot of people would disagree and go, well, it's the job you do. And it's like, well, what kind of world are we living in where if you do certain jobs, you're entitled to get shit from people? Because there's no other jobs where you you would think that that was okay. Do you know what I mean? Not really. Unless you're a bodyguard, maybe, or a bouncer in a nightclub. I don't know. I don't feel like there's many jobs that in entitle that from people, but um, this job is one of them. Celebi, don't care anymore. But yeah, I think I think that's mainly it. I think it would. It's just a shame. It, it's kind of gone this way, but it's it's not the end of it. And it's not to say I'll never turn them back on or anything like that. I'm not feeling that way. It's mainly a time time factor, really, in my decision. I think if I had more time, I would consider turning them on, and maybe I can get more time in the future if I you know, delegate work and, and have more time, but who knows? Who knows? Right, so I have completed my repot today. I have potted these smaller ones up in these self warrings. Obviously, what I will be doing is I'll be taking these out and I will be fully rinsing these and rinsing that and giving them fresh. It's just I hadn't planned this, so that is not what has occurred. This one was actually already rinsed out on the inside, so I will still rinse it anyway. I'll do exactly the same thing. I will pull this out. I will rinse it through, give it fresh water, probably clean the outsides of all of these because they're a bit minging, and we will see how it goes. This plant, right, if you've never seen this plant before, please Google it because you have no idea how beautiful this plant gets. It looks a bit basic and it looks a bit boring now, but I'm telling you, this is so juvenile for this plant, and there's a lot of philodendron that look like this when mature. This is nothing. It basically gets more and more and more and more and more intricate, like ridiculously intricate. So if you're interested, please have a look at that. Or if you want to see that video actually on, I can't remember what I called it, but basically unusual plants that people don't tend to own that are hard to find, but won't break the bank. 
then it features in that. And there might be some other plants in there that you think, all right, I, I fancy something different because I acknowledge that, honestly, I think a lot of rare plant collecting is not just, well, I like to think this anyway, but it's not just about getting the stuff that everyone wants, right? That, that bores the hell out of me. That's not what I'm interested in. A lot of it for me is the hunt. I think that's one of the most fun parts of collecting rare plants. It's the hunt. So the video basically is about the hunt for certain plants that you can't find that easily. But if you do find them because they're not in demand and it's not something that people want in collections, you're probably not going to break the bank on the plant, which makes it even more fun. So if that interests you, I will link that video in the description. I will make that the first thing that I link for you and you can check that out. Until then, thank you very much for watching this repot with me. Again, it's not quite what I had planned, but I've been stuck to a couch for the last week to two weeks. So I will let you know how these do in a future video. Hopefully we don't lose much from him. He's got to gain a lot more roots before I'm happy with him. But I think once he does, I think he's going to take over. So this here is obviously quite temporary. These babies, don't know. I think they'd be fine. Honestly, in terms of root ratio, I honestly feel like these had more than what that guy did, but we'll see. I definitely want to keep one as backup. I could maybe sell the other one in time. I'm not happy with those roots. I want a lot more new roots before I would even sell one. And I want to show that, you know, it is that this plant and it gets more mature. Another couple of leaves, I think we'll, we'll have that, but... That's the plan for them anyway. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that you enjoy my content and I'm doing a good job of making it. And if you'd like to subscribe and you haven't already, then I would love it if you could do so. That's it from me, guys. I hope you have a fantastic Friday. My launch is tomorrow, the 11th. And that's about it. I will see you next week for a really, really special plant that I've just bought. You are not going to want to miss that one. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.